Hi everyone, this is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Whenever I do a fine tuning or training of a model video, the most frequent question asked is how to create our own data set from our own data. Now I have done various videos on data set creation and data set curation, but I just wanted to show you yet another demo as how to create your own data set from a free flowing data. Now keep in mind and perspective that this is a very variable thing and this would heavily depend upon your use case, your own data. Data could be of any form. It could be in your databases and database could be an RDBM, RDBMS or it could be NoSQL. Data could be in text files, in CSV files. Maybe it is in your Notion repo or it is in your Jira or wherever. So you can imagine that the types, format, repo, repositories and the forms of data could vary and this data set creation heavily depends on that. But what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to set a baseline. As long as you meet that baseline, the data set creation becomes quite easy. Now, what is exactly, what exactly is that baseline? So look, data set creation roughly uh, revolves around two sort of skill set. First is of data engineering. So for instance, you have your data scattered in various forms. So first, comes the role of data engineer who picks up the data, who massages the data or pre-processes the data and brings it into a typical form. And then comes your role as a data set creator or AI engineer who takes that data and then converts it into a data set. And that second part is what I'm going to show you because data engineering is a totally separate field. But once you saw that demo, I'm more than sure you are going to understand what I'm saying. The tool which I'm going to use is this Bespoke Curator, which is one of the good tools out there to create a data set quite easily. Also, I will be using Olama based models, which means that we don't have to worry about any API calls throttling or quota or that sort of stuff, including, of course, the cost. And I will also be showing you how you can easily use the model with this bespoke library. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up some free flowing data of my own, a very sem small sample, and then we will create a reasoning data set out of it. The reasoning data set is what we have been using in a lot of our recent videos where we, we have fine-tuned models on reasoning data set. A reasoning data set is where a model steps through a chain of thought and then gives you the answer. And I will show you what I mean when we start doing this. So let's not waste more time. Let's get right into it. First up, let's understand very quickly what exactly is this bespoke curator. It's a it's an open source tool which makes it quite easy to create your own synthetic data set because what we are doing we are creating our own data set so that is why it is synthetic the use cases are huge for this you can train a model from that data set and you can fine-tune it also it's quite a it is python based so if you know basic python i think you should be easily able to use that and then it has got some built-in performance optimizations for caching, for async, for batching and few other things which you can read through on their GitHub repo and I will drop the link to it in video's description. And now let's get started. Let me also give a huge thanks to Mast Compute who are sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you're looking to rent a GPU on very affordable prices you can find the link to their website in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50 percent for a range of gpus this is my ubuntu system and this is my gpu card nvidia rtx a6000 with 48 gb of vram let me quickly create a virtual environment with conda and we will get cracking well that creates it let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are camel ai 
Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws with applications in data generation, task automation and world simulation and I will also drop their link in video's description. And now let me install this curator. The command is very simple. I'm just using pip to get it installed. And then I'm simply launching my Jupyter notebook and that is going to take a minute or so. Now let me show you the free flowing text I'm talking about. So this is a simple text which I am referring to. Now you might have your own data scattered throughout your documents, for example. So just to give you a hint, first you need to find some sort of delimiter so that you could distinguish your data and then maybe pre-process it. As I said, that is a data engineering side of things. And we also will be doing another video on it so stay tuned but let's suppose that we have this free flowing text where we have this bit of information and we have also delimited it with some sort of line breaks and then this is sort of a question and then there is an answer there too and now let's parse this data set into some sort of a proper structure and for that, I have just defined this function where I have just taken an example array and then I am just using this line break delimiter between these two records. And from there, I am looping through them and then distinguishing them between question, reasoning and answer. As you can see, in this sample data set, there is no reasoning. So reasoning will be empty as you can see here. So this is just a sort of data set I am creating again simple list of dictionary and then in this uh, dictionary items you can see we have this key question which is this as you can see here and then the answer so we have two items in our free flowing data set that is why in this list of dictionary there are two items so we have simply created a data set out of it nothing fancy yet all simple python and now let me show you the magic of curator but before that let's try to understand what is happening first we are importing that curator and then we are using something called as pydantic pydantic is a python library which is designed to validate and parse data based on python type annotations it enables the creation of data model classes with defined fields and types, automatically validating inputs and ensuring structured and consistent data. So for instance, look at this one. This is where we are defining a structured data type or data where each field, question, reasoning and answer is checked automatically for corrected data types and structure. So whenever we are going to create an object of this reasoning example class, Pydantic is going to ensure that that object has these three fields with these data types and same with other classes so this is what the role of pydantic is so now you can see that this reasoning uh, example is one class which is defining a single math reasoning data example so it has a question which is a math word problem from our data set it has a reasoning which model will produce and then it is the answer which is present already in our data set and then we have defined another class with the reasoning data set this defines a list of reasoning examples so this shows only one but when we create a full data set it will have multiple examples so that is where it will be stored and then you see that we have something called as curator llm class now this is where we have two functions one is a prompt function and then this is a parse function this is where the real magic of this curator is happening the prompt method here this prompt method inside this class is formatting our questions from data set into structured prompt for the llm because from this prompt we or question we want to generate a reasoning this is the one which is our from own data and we want that into this format if you have seen me using and downloading and installing reasoning model you see 
they all do this sort of reasoning or some say thinking and then they give the answer here so that is what we define in our uh, template so this is a prompt and then we have the parse method which takes the data uh, from the response of the llm and converts it into a structure object matching the reasoning data set class which we have defined here and this data set has the format of this reasoning example so everything is nested here so this is what parsing is doing because llm returns it could return anything we want it to be in a structured format and that is what we are defining here so you see uh, we have annotated this function parse that it must return a list of dictionary and then it is looping through the response of the model and then segregating them into question reasoning and answer and this is all coming from this prompt so this is what this code is doing so let me run this now i will pause here and i will open and here i am going to download the olama model so i'm just going to deactivate this default conda environment i'm going to activate my actual environment if i do olama list i already have this olama 3.18 billion if you don't have it just simply run this command uh, where it says olama pull or run llama 3.1 so i'm just going to run it in this case it's already downloaded and it should start running here so i'm just going to keep it like this it is being running and if you don't know how to install olama just go to their website click on this download for linux just run this command for windows and mac just download this exe and run accordingly it should work everywhere okay so let's go back so our model is also ready now so we need to specify that model or initialize that model and i'm just going to use this model which is llm this is our olama model and it is running locally on this host and if you see here it is getting instantiated from this reasoning generator which is this class and it is using this self so that it would know what it is doing and this is where it is defining prompt and all that stuff and processing um, our provided data so let's me run it and our model is initialized now let's run the pipeline with this curator which means basically it is going to use our free flowing data and convert it into a reasoning data set you can see when we run it it just goes through that data set which we have created above i'll just take you above just to show you this is where i'm talking about and then it is going to use all those classes to make sure that pydantic also validates the structure and there you go it has generated the data set looks really cool and it has also given us the warning which you can ignore for now because i have very small data set and i have suppressed the warning and ran it again so you see i'll just scroll down here so you see it has done everything and then it is also giving you uh, some of the statistics around it looks pretty good and no cost of course because we are running it locally okay next up let's uh, let me also show you how it looks like in a data frame so i'm just going to quickly install pandas oops okay sorry i didn't put the notebook sign here that should be done fairly quickly that's done and now let me show you in the data frame from pandas and there you go this is our sample where you see our question is what is 2 plus 2 in the reasoning it has just said addition and answer is 4 again another question which model generated is that what is the capital of france the capital of france is this and paris yes so reasoning is just very small it doesn't really make sense but this is uh, just a sample so if your data set is comprehensive and you run it for um you know properly this is going to be big your reasoning will be big and your uh, answers will be more grounded of course but this is just a quick a very um sort of a beginner level stuff to show you how you can create a reasoning data set from any data of your choice for your own use case try it out let me know how you go i will be doing more videos on data set generation and then we will also be using it for fine tuning or distillation and various other use cases i hope that this was useful 
if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thank you for watching